Now on local, five Green Bay protest demonstrators take to the streets, calling a police department training film insulting to people of color. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Tom Zalaski. Aaron Davison has this night off. Supporters of the Black Lives Matter movement blocked intersections and protested a video released by the Green Bay Police Department. The video in question is called Hands Up, We Won't Shoot. It shows an officer giving the public instructions on how to defuse a tense situation with police. So in this scenario, this young man had nothing to do with the situation at hand, but found himself in a scary encounter surrounded by police cars. And he did everything right. He remembered, hands up, don't shoot. Got his hands in the air and showed those police officers that he was not a threat to them so that they could approach, make contact with him, and sort out the truth of what was going on. This video is part of the Green Bay Police Department series called Beyond the Badge, and it was posted on social media. Well, this evening, a group of protesters made their way through the east side of Green Bay, stopping at Roosevelt and East Mason Street. They were right outside of our Channel 5 studios here. From there, they marched through the streets of Green Bay, across the Mason Street Bridge, and into the downtown district. The protesters called the video insulting and disrespectful to people of color who have lost their lives during police confrontations. As taxpaying citizens of this community, I feel offended. I feel like it is a direct slap in the face. I feel disrespected that they would even make a mockery of something like that. When all these black people in America are dying at the hands of officers and, of officers and aren't being prosecuted for it. The Green Bay Police Department says it's Beyond the Badge series is designed to explain some of the officers' expectations of what they hope to see when interacting with the public. Previous episodes covered traffic stops and police calls. News now from your local election headquarters. Wisconsin has been a pivotal political state for decades now, which has resulted in many visits by presidents. And on Monday, the president will campaign in Oshkosh, the same day as the virtual Democratic National Convention. Local 5's Rhonda Fox has reaction to Wisconsin's image as a presidential battleground state. It's kind of a cool opportunity, you know, not every day do you have the leader of the free world come into your community. President Trump will visit Bassler Flight Services in Oshkosh. And this trip is pivotal because Wisconsin is one of several swing states. Well, we're going to be front, front and center, so, um, you know, it brings some people in the, into the community and puts that spotlight on our community. And, you know, it's, that's, that's great publicity to have. While many businesses welcome President Trump's visit, some residents feel otherwise. In my family alone, I have uh, family members that are, are Republicans, are Democrats, and, and most of them are just fed up with politics. Stephen says Wisconsin farms and cities are reflective of our country's urban, rural politics, and candidates should pay attention. I think it's important um, not just for a presidential candidate to come to our state, um, for because of the reasons of being, it being a swing state, but also because I think it gives them a good perspective of the pulse of our nation. Although Wisconsin was a red state in 2016, Stephen says Wisconsinites will break tradition to do what's best for the country. We are innovative and and we're willing to re-elect a candidate if they've done a good job or give somebody else a chance to see what they're going to do um, in the next election. In Oshkosh, Rhonda Fox, Local 5 News. On Monday, President Trump is expected to deliver remarks regarding Joe Biden's plans for the economy. Well, Vice President Mike Pence also announced he'll be visiting Wisconsin. He'll be in Darien, which is in the southern part of the state, on Wednesday, the 19th. The Vice President will speak about the President's strong record of putting American workers first and making America first trade a priority. And Monday starts the Democratic National Convention, which will be held virtually. Each night there will be multiple speakers from the Democratic Party. Monday night, Senator Bernie Sanders and New York Governor Andrew Cuomo will be among the speakers. Local 5 will have coverage of the convention right here on the air, as well as daily online streams of these speakers on our website at wearegreenbay.com. Turning now to coronavirus news tonight. 
Two of Northeast Wisconsin's largest school districts have made a decision to move fall sports, including football, to the spring. The Green Bay Area School District made that move, citing concern over the spread of COVID-19. The district considered the growing number of positive cases, plus guidance from the Department of Health and Human Services. School Superintendent Stephen Murray says the decision was not an easy one, but necessary for the safety and well-being of student-athletes. And then the Appleton School District, they followed suit, and they'll be moving their high school fall sports to the spring as well. The school district emailed parents saying the health concerns of students is the primary reason for the move. Middle school fall sports, they will be canceled, that according to the district. Now your latest COVID-19 numbers. The reports show the number of new positive cases topped 1,000 once again. That brings the total number to more than 64,200 cases. Of the total number of cases considered active, 9,000 are active. There were over 10,000 test results available, and of those, 9.8% were positive. That's an increase from yesterday's 7.6%. 354 COVID-19 patients are now in the hospital. Turning on to other local news tonight, uh, we now know the identity of the human remains found in Wapaka County last Sunday. The Sheriff's Department says they are of 27-year-old Chad Anderson. His remains were discovered in the township of Lind, that is located just southwest of Wapaka. Anderson was reported missing on April the 20th of this year. Well, tonight's hometown hero wanted to be a teacher, but the military was calling, and she knew exactly what to do. We'll meet Kelly Carroll, whose career in the Navy ran for some 20 years. And later, training camp kicks into high gear tomorrow for the Packers. And we have some storm chances. Time out for you on your Saturday, the 4K. Time now for an encore presentation of Hometown Hero. After her time at UW Whitewater, Kelly Carroll knew she wanted to travel the world, and she was able to do that. She hit the water by enlisting in the Navy. An impressive career spanning two decades, she moved up the ranks more quickly than most people, but it was not an easy journey. Local 5 caught up with Kelly in Appleton to learn more about the hardships of being a female in a male-dominated profession. It was the best career choice I made in my life. But enlisting with the Navy was not Kelly Carroll's first career choice as she wanted to become a teacher. This flag here is a flag that was flown on that ship during my last underway. Enlisting in 1984, she became a ship serviceman responsible for finances and accounting. Purchase ordering, inventory control and management, that kind of world is, is what I worked in. She would serve on five different ships and was also deployed five times. I was in De Desert Storm, um, deployed four times during Desert Storm and Desert Shield. The other deployment was to Japan. Women were only allowed on non-combatant ships, so basically we were allowed on sub-tenders and destroyer tenders. We would travel with a battle group and pull into ports at different time frames, but our, our major job was to supply parts, etc., and do work on some of the ships if they were to pull into a port. And being a woman, she says she had to work extra hard to fit in. It was always, when you went from command to command or ship to ship, there was always that feeling of having to reprove yourself constantly. But that only made her stronger. They used to call me the little chihuahua because when I got my teeth into something, there was no saying no. And I wasn't going to let go until I got what I wanted. And she would eventually get around to teaching. She retired as an E-8 after 20 years of service and used her experience to influence others. To the young women who uh, work for me, it was always, well, I can't. yeah, you can. <laughs> you just have to get it in your mind that you can do it. Right. And once you get that mentality, be the little chihuahua. And today, the little Chihuahua continues to give back in many ways with American Legion Post 539. Honor, courage, and commitment are, you know, the Navy's core values and try and live those three core values every day of my life. 
And we thank you for your service, Kelly. And don't forget, if you know somebody you would like to nominate for our Hometown hero segment, just send an email to us here at the station. All right, sports time now. Matt Reynoldson joins us. Hi, Matt. All right, Tom. Green Bay and Appleton athletes still reeling from today's high school sports announcements. Hear from a pair of coaches next. Plus, Christian Yelich brewing up some bombs on Chicago's north side. Highlights from the crew and the Cubs coming up next. And now, Local 5 Sports with Matt Reynolds. Another pair of dominoes fall in the sports world. This time, it's right here in northeast Wisconsin as Green Bay and Appleton say no fall sports in 2020. Lacrosse also following today as now there's a growing movement to push fall sports to the spring after the WIAA's decision this morning. Now, the option to move fall sports back already existed, but this morning, the Board of Control ironed out the logistics for this year's sports calendar and what it would look like in a condensed format. With Green Bay Public Schools already starting virtually, coaches and players had an idea this could be coming, but it doesn't lessen the blow for athletes that will now go another three months at least without high school sports. It's, it's got to it's gotta be tough. Uh, thankfully, we do have a plan in place that hopefully we'll be able to get return to some football this spring. I teach the kids about uh, you're going to you're going to have obstacles in your life and obstacles on on the, the football field and it's it's how you overcome them and this is just one of those obstacles and we're going to we're going to overcome them. 3:30 was tough to read the email that I got, you know, but my emotions don't matter in this situation. It's about our kids and and continue to build them up and continue to pull them up the mountain. And, and that's what we got to do. And that's our job as coaches. It's not about us. It's about the kids. Make sure that they stay positive throughout the experience and enjoy the experience. Because you never know, it could be one of the best experiences of their life. We can't predict the future, but hopefully we can make the most out of it when it becomes the present. That's a good way to look at it. Here's how that spring plan lines up. Most sports, most sports will start in late February with football following in early March. A key note, there will be no culminating events, which means any championship at the conference or regional level will be for fall teams only. Football will be capped at a seven-game schedule in the spring. Well, as of now, we won't have to wait till March for the National Football League. Knock on wood for that in this roller coaster of a year, but there's one thing for sure. Tomorrow, the Packers will be on a practice field for the first time in nearly seven months. The actual football part of training camp starts tomorrow. Helmets and shorts for the green and gold just for the first two or three practices at Radnitschke Field. It all boils down to a three-week ramp up before game week. Not much time for rookies and fringe players to make an impression, but luckily for the vets, it'll be a continuation of what they've already installed. I don't think practice will be too much different. Um, it'll be good to actually get out there and play some football, you know, go against the ones and you know, really just get out there and compete in the offseason. I really just trying to get in the best shape I can be in. We can go out there and we can play man, you know, pretty much the whole game. You know, that, that's the type of shape that, you know, that they expect us to be in as corner. That's the type of shape that I need to be in to take my game to that next level. It'll be a different training camp for everyone. Three weeks of practice before game week preps, and it all starts tomorrow morning. Tonight in Chicago, Brewers looking to bounce back against the Cubs in a defensive stalemate. Brandon Woodruff on the mound. Here, here in the second inning, he freezes a batter. Jason Kipnis goes down looking at that one. Then later, Christian Yelich, he sees a changeup he likes and goes for it. Straight to the right center field gap. That's a three-run homer for Yelich to take a 4-3 lead. Later, eighth inning, Josh Hader with the bases loaded, and he gets a batter swinging, knocks him down with that one. The Brewers lead 4-3 in the ninth. This one's still going on over on Fox Sports Wisconsin. And for all the very public Public struggles Major League Baseball has had with the virus. It's time to give credit where credit's due. The last round of over 12,000 tests, only four were positive. That's 0.03 percent, Tom. That hater pitch was over the guy's the head. High heat right there, right there. Got him jammed up top. Hold him. All right. Thanks, Matt. We're back with weather. Stay with us.